Hi and welcome to today's video which is about the Prusa box and I've just printed off, literally it's still warm and just, just come off the build plate there, uh, new corners for the Prusa box which allow the top half to easily detach uh, from the bottom. So if you want to actually service or, or get to a particular part of the printer that's difficult at the moment uh, you should be able to separate the two parts. Uh, I haven't actually looked at these yet, but uh, it looks as if they do do slot in somehow like this. So we're going to give that a go in a moment. Um, so if you haven't got a Prusa box yet or you've got one on order, obviously you'll be, you can use these and build them from scratch. It's a little bit more difficult for those of us that have already built the Prusa box. So we're going to have to take the old corners off and put the new ones in. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, one thing, if you've got the modular front, and that includes the temperature sensor area, that is actually covering the screws for the corner. It does mean having to dismount the entire modular front. Hopefully that will be fairly easy to do just in one piece and move it out of the way of those screws. Uh, so I'm going to have a quick look now at this and then I'll get on to replace one, one of the corners just so we can see how easy it is or difficult depending on how that goes. Uh, one other thing, um, if you've got electronics such as LEDs, uh, extractor fan, obviously if, you, if you've got them hardwired in uh, you're going to have to get uh, some sort of uh, connectors. Excuse me, I've just got some that have literally just arrived so let's take a look at these uh, so I don't know whether you can whether it will focus on these perhaps so just some little connectors so I'm going to um, chop where I've got wires coming down because mine are hardwired into um, a set of four relays uh, to go with um, Octoprint so chop those and put these connectors in in between so I can easily take the connectors apart and then move the top of the unit. So that's some extra work. Okay, see you in a moment. Right, if you fiddle around with this enough, you should be able to push the existing block out. And I've got a lot of wires there. It does take a little bit of fiddling. You don't want to bend the sprung uh, stainless. You'd be very careful. Uh, another way would, would be to undo all four corners in one go if you wanted. Uh, I'm probably not going to do that. Um, but there you go, that's out. So on to the next step of, uh, I'm just going to take the nuts out, put them in the new housing. So I've put the nuts into the new moulds. So we have them there and we've got them here and you've got side nuts there. And let's see how this is going to fit together. So now the interesting part, putting, trying to get this piece in when I don't have the top right off. So let's slot it in on the inside. I can get that to go in to begin with. There we go. Right, that's slotted in inside and pushed all the way down. Let's see if we can get this part in as well, which I seem to remember was a fun part to do on the, on the original build.
Right, there we go. A little bit of moving and pressing. It is sprung because um, here you, you will notice there are some springs here. So that's why I've got a bit of a, a push there because the springs are either side. So let's try and get the, uh, the bolts in. And I'm therefore assuming, and I haven't really looked too closely at Julian's video, that you probably only have to undo the bottom two bolts each side. That will spring up so that the barb on the end of this fitting is pushed out of the way and you can lift the entire corner free. Which is a very clever design of Julian's, if that's the, the way it is working. Right, one corner done and all in. I'm just going to tighten the rest of these. So, there we go. Oh, and just before I start on the rear of the Prusa box, uh, if anyone's interested in adding fans to the back of their power supply unit to suck out warm air and give better airflow through the power supply which is inside. Uh, perhaps you'd like to uh, add a comment on this video. Just say if you want to see, basically I've, I've fitted a fitting here that's got uh, a couple of uh, small fans and with some stays to stop it getting too close to the rear wall. Uh, if you're interested in that let me know and I'll make a video of it. Right, let's back to this video for the corner mounts. I've just added some wires here, some connectors, a couple of connectors for the cables that are running down here for the fan and the LED. Oh, by the way, if anyone's interested in how to connect up a uh, four-way relay, again, post some comments uh, here below. If you do have the modular front, I'm on to the last corner now. Um, I've taken out all of the bolts, there's uh, one, two, three, four, there's six bolts holding this front in. I've undone five and I've left the bottom one there, plus the cables actually holding it in. So I can just get to the top two bolts there and if I lift it up I can get to the bottom two here. So it saves taking anything more apart and I'm just going to slot the last corner in into there, bolt it up and then we can see how the whole thing comes apart. Okay guys, all done. Moment of truth now. I've got the rear fan and LEDs disconnected. Uh, I've taken my wires cam off of its side mount there and also the temperature sensor that's on a on the webcam mount that's been disconnected um, one thing i do notice immediately as i've mentioned about the extended part of the modular front if it's not that quick if you want to undo the corners you've still got to take most of this off to actually undo the bolt underneath so i think Julian, you're going to have to have a think about how to get around getting access to that bolt, whether it's a redesign of this end, perhaps. Uh, I really don't know, but uh, to make the, the most use of this great new feature, we need to sort out something about this, please. Right, uh, so I've left this disconnected. I'm going to undo the the one uh, bolt here and you don't have to undo them fully so this is the bolt that you have to undo here the one with the uh, hook or barb on it you only have to undo it a little way and it clears the stainless steel and will allow it or should allow it hopefully to be pulled up I would guess so do that on each side 
I'm just wondering if it's going to snag uh, on these other bolts though, or how far out it has to come. Um, we'll see. Right, I'm going to do the rest of it and then we'll see. Okay, so I've taken the top off. I've not shown you that, that process because I found it a bit of a pain to be honest. The hooks on the bottom part here quite often foul on the bolt heads making it a bit difficult to pull off. You get them over one, go to do the next one that slip back over the tops of this one. And that happened all the way around. Um, I guess if you, like in Julian's video, he's got a table he can easily go around and it's probably a lot easier access as well. I'm having to try and turn the printer around. When you're moving it, quite often it clips itself back in again as you're moving it around. I mean, ultimately, yeah, it's taken me three or four minutes, actually, to, to get this top off, or perhaps slightly longer, um, moving the print around, having to keep on undoing the clips, and using a screwdriver just to prise them away. Because although they're, they're spring-loaded in the print, some of these just would not uh, come out on the spring-loading basis. I'd undo the bolt. Uh, and it was still flush, so I had to use a uh, narrow screwdriver just to try and get the bottom to spring out. Uh, so yeah, now I do have access to the printer, which is great if I, if I need to do any maintenance on it, so that is very handy. Um, but I suppose the, yeah, because you've got a lot of wiring here, um, you don't really want to try and take the printer out. Oh, it's a, a bit of a faff if you've got a lot of wiring in there already. Um, so, it's hand oh, summary, yes, it's handy to be able to take the top off, so that's an improvement. Uh, I do think something can be improved, whether it's the original design of where these bolts are on here. Bolt heads are so close to these bolt heads and, and causing them to foul. Perhaps they could be moved away in future designs, uh, a few millimetres so there's easy clearance. And as I said, on the modular front, if you've got the full modular front, the temperature gauge uh, obscures this bolt here, which means you've got to take five other, other bolts out and your modular front is hanging off. Um, so perhaps Julian can have a look at that as well. Uh, but to summarise, yes it does work. I can access the printer if I need to now and I'm sure I'll have a lot of fun uh, getting this top back on again. Um, but yeah, good first draft Julian. Might be able to improve it somehow. Uh, they the slot together pretty well. So well done overall. Right, uh, if you like this video, perhaps want to see other videos, um, as I've mentioned, the fans on the PSU, which, well, I was printing these parts for 24 hours almost, they took to print. I had that those fans on and it kept the power supply cool. Uh, so I'm pleased with that. Or if you want to see about relays, or anything else, uh, please like and subscribe. I'll be grateful for that. And see you next time.